got sitting down for with Collider. For, so, Margo, I just wanted to ask you first. So, in being a produ producer on this film, can you talk about the difference between being on set on this one versus on the Suicide Squad? I think we met a very different version of Harley in Suicide Squad, and now she's at a different stage of her life. And I, I think the most uh, differentiating fact, differentiating, dif differentiating factor <laughs> is that she's no longer with the Joker. They break up at the beginning of the movie and um, she's not okay with it even though she would tell you that she is. Um, so that puts her in a place of vulnerability to begin with and we're seeing her kind of act out in even more erratic ways than usual I think. But also the fact that she's the narrator in this film uh, kind of colours the viewer's experience mm -hmm. because you are seeing things from her point of view and being given kind of her opinion on things, whether she's right or wrong. Most of the case, she's wrong. Um, but she jumps around in the story and she forgets to introduce you to people. And, you know, it's, it's a colourful world. It's, it's a side of Gotham that we haven't seen before. Truly, we truly have not seen anything like this. For all of you guys, can you just talk about what was your favourite aspect in find, trying to find your character and portraying your character? You want to take it or...? Uh, sure. I mean, working working with Margot and Chris and everybody on set, it was just, it was so amazing. And I think with finding Cassandra Kane, I really had to figure out who she was and um, her story and her background. Um, and I did base it a lot off of the comics, and I worked a lot with Kathy and her notes. And then other than that, there wasn't really anything um, in the film industry, in the film aspect where Cassandra Kane wasn't really represented. So I felt this big responsibility to take that head on. And you absolutely killed it. What about Aww. you, Chris? No, you, you nailed did. it. No, you did. Thank you. Absolutely. I got, Thank I, you. you know, Margo was a big inspiration. Um, I really watched her on set uh, because we're both playing these, you know, kind of larger than life characters. And I watched Suicide Squad uh, to kind of find the tone of what was too big, what was too small, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so, yeah, and of course the comics were really helpful as well. And so can you just talk about, because you guys all had some really intense, challenging scenes, can you just talk about some of the most challenging scenes you remember, like on set, filming, or just scenes that stick out to you from just because they were awesome or fun memories? We had a lot of fun. I think the one time that all of us are in a scene together is in the safe house, mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of like the the time the moment where you see all the elements mm -hmm. collide mm -hmm. um everyone's disparate storylines collide in a pretty insane way and um it, it was just so fun to be able to do that together it was also like a ton of dialogue but often in these kinds of films yeah. you don't get to do that much dialogue all at once and i i, I don't know i i really loved that it's one of my favorite moments yeah i feel like it was so fun and crazy that it, like it, it's a full-on rainbow, and I feel like if you could pull in, like, a zoo with, like, elephants and giraffes, it would have been just as yeah. fine. Like, it would have felt the same, like, the yeah. same energy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that scene in particular was, uh, at, at the fun house, was really, it was, that was a fun scene. That was my audition scene uh, with, uh, uh, the, when me and Margaret are yeah. there on the couch. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking during that scene that I wanted to... I don't know why this was uh, this was in my head, but that my oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that my it would my name was Victor Harry <laughs> says. <laughs> I don't know why that that helped I me. Felt that. You, no, I, I felt that. that. Yeah, I felt that. That I wanted that to be my middle name. I don't know why. <laughs> like that that oh helped me out. Get, gotta get into character. Yeah, whatever, you whatever, 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 whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I just have crazy yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. So since you're not here, can you just talk about what it's like working with uh, Ewan McGregor and him trying to become Black Mask? Because y'all two together, that was just crazy. Like, oh, man. So he was so life. fun. How, can you talk about that? Yeah, he was great. You know, he's such a lovely guy. He's so funny and charming. And then on a dime, he goes really violent in this movie. And it was fun to be this uh, his henchman who just was obsessed with him. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I loved him. I've loved him since Train Spotting, and so I, I, I was just a, a great honor to work with him. And what about you, Margaret? Same thing. Train Spotting was a, a bit of a reference for Christina and I when we were first talking about, you know, what we wanted to achieve with this film, you know, four years ago or whatever. Um, one of the main things that I, I really wanted to pull off was to not let it feel like it had that three-act formulaic structure that I was starting to 
become so accustomed to right. it. You can kind of like, and eh, now we're going to have the second act low point, and now we're gonna, you know, it's, uh, you can kind of predict what's going to happen. So uh, a movie like Train Spotting, which has you know, it feels chaotic, yet it is always satisfying uh, when you break it down. It actually fits a three-act structure perfectly, but it doesn't feel like that. So it's a movie we always had in our head, and then Ewan came on board years later, and um, it was just kind of, it, it, we were incredibly grateful. Well, thank you guys so much for talking with me. I hey, had an incredible you. blast with the movie, and I can't wait for more people to see it. Oh, thanks, thank man. Thank you guys. So